Bienvenue to Welcome to Reporters Plus, our special extended program giving you a deeper insight into the big stories. Our team's been on one of the most dangerous of journeys, the route that takes migrants across the desert to Libya. On their way, they hope to find a better life, Europe their preferred destination. First, they have to pass through the treacherous crossroads of international crime. This is what's become of the Sahara Desert and what's come to define, in many ways, the town of Agadez. There, our reporters met people risking everything for a dream of better times, what they've left behind, what they will find if they ever arrive. Who knows? But first, they have to survive this precarious crossing. Julien Sauvage and Catherine Norris Trent with this Reporters Plus special feature. Before sunset every Monday, the wave of departures begins. At first, just a few pickup trucks laden with migrants speed off into the desert. By night, there'll be many, many more. From here in Agadez, thousands of migrants are smuggled through the Sahara every week, heading for Libya, the Mediterranean, and Europe. We'll follow the fortunes of three of them. Mamadou, aged 18, from Guinea, who dreams of a future in the UK or Germany. Abu Bakr, from Senegal, who's already been expelled from Sweden, but is on the road again. And Mohammed, at age 33, he's risking it all to try and find his friends and fame in Berlin. This is a journey through the migrant ghettos of Agadez, a city of smugglers' squats, usually off limits for TV cameras. We gain rare access inside. It's where we first meet Mohammed. After three years without a job, he's hit the road and describes himself as an adventurer. I have to take responsibility for my family. I'm the only man. The others are all women, so I have to fight for them. Either I succeed or they'll continue to suffer. If I do make it, they'll be glad to have whatever money I can send back to them, especially my mother. The route's difficult. People will die along the way, but we risk our lives. There's simply no choice. From the president to the pauper, everyone's rushing to get rich. The words of Mohammed's song. He dreams of becoming a singer, or perhaps a footballer, once he reaches Europe. You have to live life to the full and get to the West, then everyone can see you. You can be a star. That's why I'm doing this. These young men are full of impossible dreams. It's what brought them on this perilous journey. A strategic point at the entrance to the desert, Agadez is the hub for Africans heading north. They flock here from all over West Africa, the last major stop before they cross the Sahara to Libya and try and set off for Europe. An ancient caravan crossroads, Agadez is a World Heritage Site, once bustling with visitors and trade. But rebellions and jihadist attacks have put an end to the Golden Age. Now, there aren't any tourists. A lot of people are afraid to come here, even though there's no danger in Agadez. Now we have all these illegal migrants who are heading to Libya, but we don't earn any money with them. Illegal migration is now by far the biggest business in town, fueled by a never-ending flow of customers. Back in the migrant ghettos, we find Abu Bakr. He's on his second journey to Europe. He lived for four years in Sweden before being deported. I've seen it before, a lot of people dying in this route to guard Europe, you know. What we can do, what we have to do, we don't have any possibility, you know. We have to do like that. I know a lot of people here, some people can die in the road. We know that, but we tried. 
To him, staying in his village in Senegal seemed like a life sentence in any case. Everything is locked like this, you know. When you wake in the morning, brush your teeth, everything, you sit, you watch the people, you know. They do nothing. What they do? We don't have the job. We don't have nothing to do. A generation of African youth searching for its future. On average, two-thirds of sub-Saharan Africans are aged under 25. The majority of youths are unemployed. That's what pushes them on here, through the hardship. No meat, no fishing, nothing. You know, just we try to do our best, you know, to survive. We have uh, maybe, maybe 50, maybe 200 people here, you know, just for maybe 5 kilo, 10 kilo is not, uh, is not enough for us. The rest of the day, they wait, bored and frustrated in the 45 degree heat, <laughs> waiting for the next step of their journey. Abu Bakr has been here for three months. Like this jacket, because it's your, in the desert, you know, is cold somewhere, you know, in the desert, in the night, you know, you have to have the jacket, you know, when we're running all the night, you know, like to go to Libya, you know. When I was in school in Sweden, <laughs> this is my book, French Swedish, you know. This, you see? Do you miss it then? Yeah, a lot. And I want to go back in school. What do you miss? I miss the school, the friends, everything, you know. And uh, yeah, I want to be something for this continent. What they're all waiting for is money. More funds to pay the passage to Libya. Most have run out by the time they meet Jagadez, often robbed on the way. And now they're arranging for their families to send more. Hello. Hey. I can't hear you, I can't hear you. Hey. <laughs> no, you have to trust me. We'll sort it out. I swear to you, I swear to God, they've said they'll send us the money there. I'll call them as soon as I arrive. Mamadou is just 18 and ran away from school to head north. He hasn't called his parents at home in Guinea since, but he's confident everything will work out. That was my brother who just called me. I've got a big brother who's already in Libya. He just called. My family is very worried about me. I didn't tell them I was coming here. Otherwise, they wouldn't have let me go. I dream of becoming an IT genius. That's my dream, becoming an IT genius. What kind of IT? Hmm? I want to design computers, telephones, everything. Once I get north, I'll be able to get my studies and my career back on track. At times, they seem carefree and unaware. Most of these migrants are very young. In late spring and summer, more than 10,000 pass through the ghettos of Agadez every week in the hands of clandestine cross-border networks. One of the smugglers agrees to a rare interview on condition we hide his identity. I used to work in transport before, driving passengers around here in Tower and in town. But then I met some Gambians. And I helped them get to Libya. From Libya, they managed to cross to Europe. They got me into the smuggler network. Now, if one of them has a brother back home who wants to leave, they give him my number. It's difficult to resist. 
Smuggling earns him five times more than driving a bus. This is the only work that pays enough to eat. People come here, we help them, they leave in that set. If it all stopped suddenly, we wouldn't have any work at all. There used to be tourism here. Our parents worked in tourism. Europeans used to come here to see the desert, but now that's all stopped. For a price, he provides the migrants with food, shelter and water. That's become scarce in recent years. The city's population has ballooned. We're going to fetch some water. There's a water problem in Agadez. There's nothing in the pumps. We have to go get it ourselves, and you can't live without water. The smugglers stock up for crossing the Sahara. One of the major dangers is dying of thirst. The crossing would be impossible. This is all for one day. It's a question of life or death. He stocks up 85 litres for every car which will cross the desert. The smugglers don't make any efforts to hide their preparations. Everyone in Agadez knows about the trafficking, including the authorities. And the migrants make the most of the evening's relative call to head out of the ghettos onto the streets. Abu Bakr, Mamadou, all of them are entitled to be here under West Africa's freedom of movement deal. But Niger's authorities say they can't crack down on the exodus north. We met with the minister who's special advisor to the president. The government of Niger cannot on its own stop this flow of migrants. It's just not possible. In any case, the lion's share of those who work in the traffic of migrants, well, the vast majority, they're young people, and we don't have any employment to offer them. So, we have a dilemma. We know that if our youth are left with nothing to do, they'll create problems. They could even destabilize our country. We do know, though, that this is not a lasting solution. At the moment, no one knows of a durable solution how to control this massive flow of migrants across the desert. And the latest figures show it's increasing. The International Organization for Migration, a global humanitarian body, has been stepping up its presence in Agadez, sheltering some in its transit center and helping, where possible, to organize a safe passage home. Today, a convoy of more than 500 people arrives at the IOM center. Mainly women and children who've been repatriated south from Algeria as part of a bilateral agreement. The journey went well, thank God. I'm praying I will never return now. A week on the back of a lorry in the searing sun. The youngest to make the journey, a baby just 12 days old, deported with his mother. These people are now going to rest. We'll give them proper assistance. Afterwards, we're going to register them. That will allow us to see how many migrants we've helped since this scheme began. These government-organized repatriations, though, are a drop in the ocean. The IOM has noticed a surge in migrants heading north since the fall of Gaddafi and the resulting chaos. 
At the moment, there isn't a legitimate, reliable government which can ensure the security of those who end up in Libya. And so you get certain people who are exploiting the migrants, locking them up in cells, we call these dungeons on credit. They take the migrants and demand money from their families. The Libyan route is so dangerous, some migrants turn back. Alpha from Guinea is still traumatized. Honestly, in the prisons, it's unbearable. They mistreat anyone with black skin. Everything that goes on there, it's hell. They beat you all over, and there's no food. They treat you disgustingly. They're capable of anything, anything. We couldn't do anything about it. We just had to pay money to get out. They tell you if you won't pay, they'll sell you to armed groups. You have to pay 500, 600 euros. If you don't pay, you don't get out. His ordeal cost him and his family more than 2,000 euros, much of which is debt. It's a nightmare. You could hardly imagine it. If this is the only way to get into Europe, well then, I'll never go to Europe. Never. The IOM is now helping Alpha return home to his country. In the centre, we also find Rosemary from Nigeria. Like most women who make the journey, she was duped and forced into prostitution in Libya. It was like a hell. You know, some men would come to Nigeria telling girls that there is a business in Libya, they will help you to do this, but it's not true. All what they are doing there is prostitution. When you see a girl of 10 years, 11 years, doing prostitution, it's not good. And on it goes. All the migrants we speak to who've escaped Libya describe scenes of hell. We meet Dauda, arrived just a week ago. He tells us he was on board a boat in the Mediterranean when violence broke out. When they caught me, I nearly reached Tunisia. That day, they killed more than 300 people at sea. They were shooting people in the boats, more than 300 people. They kill us. They're always doing it, killing the migrants. And then they throw the bodies away in the desert, just like that, like dogs. Now he's working to put that trauma behind him. This IOM project aims to give returning migrants the tools to rebuild their lives at home. It's a simple scheme, they're learning to make bricks out of recycled plastic. But the idea is to allow these young men to return home with the potential to earn a living and their heads held high. Right now I feel proud, proud to be working and getting a diploma. If I get my diploma, I'm going to set up my own training scheme at home to help others. The IOM is counting on this trickle-down effect. So far, 70 trainees have completed the scheme. Certainly, this is just helping a small proportion of those who pass through the IOM center and through Agadez. But it could have a much greater impact if all those who are trained pass on the information to other people back at home. A ray of hope. But the project can do nothing to prevent the inexorable flow of migrants through Agadez. It's Monday, the big day, when thousands of migrants will head off north. We catch up with Mohammed, the wannabe singer from Guinea. He's received word his family have transferred him more money. He should have enough now to get to Libya. It's arrived. The last 90 euros for the smugglers. I'm happy. I'm going to go and pay now. They'll put me on the list. I'm going to get ready now for tonight, the departure. How do you feel about that? 
It's a bit scary, but I'm going to try and stay focused. No turning back now, even though the road ahead is daunting. Mohammed and his friend head back to the ghetto to prepare. But in the chaos of departure day, Mohammed is moved suddenly to another smuggler's camp. We lose his trace and have had no news of him since. Here, people often disappear on the road. Today, the ghettos are crowded. Vendors have arrived selling food, drink, sunglasses, clothing to protect from the elements. Everything you need for the desert road. And of course, money. Local currency for safe passage. That's Libyan money. Uh -huh. Everyone who's leaving needs some of this. What's your exchange rate? So that's 40 dinars for 10,000 francs and 5,000 francs for 20 dinars. As departure time nears, the smugglers are growing tense. We're told to leave the ghetto and only come back at nightfall. By dusk, the migrants are ready and waiting, lined up into groups by the smugglers. Nerves and adrenaline are almost palpable, although 18-year-old Mamadou would never admit it. It's quite impressive, but because there are a lot of us, I'm not afraid. The journey is difficult, but I'm putting my faith in Allah. You're not going to change your mind? I won't change my mind. <laughs> now I'm ready. I'm ready to go all the way. <laughs> He's bundled onto a pickup and does make it to join his brother in Tripoli. We're later told by migrants in the camp. OK, let's go, let's go, let's go. You go that side, my man. <laughs> hey, you, get out of the way. You're taking up too much space with your big feet. 24 migrants are crammed into the back of each pickup, with only wooden rods jammed between their legs to stop them falling off. In these rare images, you get a feel of the scale of this clandestine migration. It's a well-rehearsed routine. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Thanks a lot, good luck. For those migrants who don't have enough money to leave, it's a difficult moment. <laughs> Abu Bakr is still waiting for funds. He won't be going to Sweden anytime soon. I want to just move and go with them. You know. Are you tired of waiting? Yeah, I need the job. I cannot have the job. How I can survive if I can, I can job? I'm going to pray for them to be in a destination where they want to go. The epic journey starts at least three days' drive to Libya. They travel in convoy for security. Bandits and armed groups target the pickups. But that's far from the only danger. A breakdown can be fatal. It's deflated on this side. Yes, on this side too, there was a bump in the road. The brakes smell funny as well. We've got three spare tires. 
This is the Sahara. If you break down in your car, no one's going to come and rescue you. You're going to be stuck there. Dying stranded in the desert is a very real risk. Okay, bye bye. After four hours, we reach what was once a tiny oasis, now a major service station on this desert highway. Everyone here depends on this mass migration to survive. Life's now impossible to imagine here without it. This is our only job. We don't have any other work. That's right. They can never stop this. There are just so many people coming through Niger, and the roads are vast desert. The migrants themselves are more determined than ever. Definitely, I don't get any rest. You can see how, how I'm in, in a very bad situation right now. I still have to do. I have to see the end result of everything. The exodus of migrants through the Sahara is on the rise. Since February, 135,000 people have traveled north from Agadez to Libya, making this now the major migrant route towards Europe. A report by Catherine Norris-Trent and Julian Sauvage. That's it for this edition. We'll see it again via our website, France24.com. This is Reporters Plus on France24. Stay with us.